Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of two week review of actually three competitions. We have Liga Portugal, we have a little bit Copa del we have no we have Copa del Rey and we have La Liga. Portugal was one of the few nations that actually did not pause their league. So uh, there are quite a few games that we have to talk to, but before that forgot it for the Bundesliga review, but I do have a slightly new setup um, uh, where I'm kind of hiding these two shirts behind me a little bit. So I decided since I have moved the camera a little bit over and we can see now these shirts a bit better, I'm gonna do now the order as follows. I mean for Portugal will be one, two, three changes. Uh, so the top 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 team had the best uh, changes since the last time we talked second and third. And then we go with Spain one, two, three, four, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten so basically like this uh, I think it makes a little bit more sense although I know this shirt here is not as well seen but so be it so just a little bit that on the new setup um I don't have too much to talk about Portugal in general except that Benfica is really tailing off uh, and yeah you know maybe we'll, it's a prelude we have a last title chance for Sporting coming up um, in Spain, we have a very interesting semi-final with none of the big three, uh, three or even big four in there. Uh, no, none of the big three in there, so no Barcelona, Atletico, Real. That is really, really exciting. And in La Liga, we won't have a title race because just uh, Sevilla remains the most frustrating team in Europe. Because every time they have a chance, they are a good team. But every time that you think they have a chance of getting into a title race, they just always botch it a little bit. And Real Madrid says, okay, we don't need to do much. Thank you. Title is ours. Um, but And we also have to talk a little bit about probably the first entertaining game under Xavi for Barcelona. Uh, but yeah, that was a little bit testy with my brother on the weekend as well. Because I expressed some opinions that he didn't like. <laughs> my coolest, my one of my coolest brothers. In any way. We'll start jump into Portugal. Um, the first thing is there was a makeup game where actually Aruka beat Estoril, uh, which I was surprised because Estoril has been really, really good this season. Then the round uh, last week, uh, the, the result that sticks out is Gilles Vicente beating Benfica. But before that, I actually saw highlights of uh, Portuguese Maritimo. This was never really a contest. But, uh, what would you expect? Uh, Evan Nielsen and Pepe had, had made uh, by the 50th 2 0. And then uh, Costa pull, pulled one back, uh, but you know, uh, Porto was always gonna win that one. Uh, but I said, Gilles Vicente beating Benfica 2 2 2 1, that's a big one. I mean, they had a 2 2 2 0 lead uh, through Lino and Abrujania, uh, and only very late uh, Ramos could pull one back. So Benfica is not, is still in this array. Um, Last weekend, maybe everything uh, a little, little bit more. The big game to, uh, was, of course, the Guimaraes beat Braga. Braga, who had actually more or less knocked Sporting out of the title race. So uh, that's always... I always look at this one as kind of one of the... Um, the next best thing after a duel between the top three, in many ways. And then, uh, you know, all the others won... Um, Porto wins at Aruca, Sporting is Family Cow, and Benfica at Tondela, so yeah. Uh, I already said it, it's all a prelude to Porto against Sporting, which happens on Friday evening. That's a game that I would no, uh, I would put on the mark on the calendar with, because this is the last chance. If Sporting win uh, against Porto, they have a good chance uh, uh, to get back into a title race. If Porto wins that one, uh, we can say game over. They are a little bit like it was with the Milan Derby on the weekend in some ways. Uh, and then, you know, the interesting duel of the teams with the almost identical crest between Benfica and Santa Clara also does happen. Enough of Portugal. Let's move over to La Liga. Uh, no, not, no, not La Liga. First, I have to talk about Copa del Rey. As I said, a very interesting uh, qual qualifier. Rayo beating uh, Mallorca thanks to a penalty. And I think it's the first time, or it at least has been a long time, but I think it's the first time that they reached uh, the semifinal stage. So a pretty huge result for them. Valencia of Akadith, um, 
uh, expectedly mo moving on. Real Sociedad again as, as Real Betis. This looks like a very clear scoreline. But that game was, any, was for 60 minutes anything but it was a game on the knife's edge. With Juan Mi giving Betis an early lead. And Betis again playing in those really nice jerseys that I don't know where we can get them or if we should get them. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I really love those because I, 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 I know they have the members uh, written on them. So yeah. Getting the first goal, but then Real Sociedad creating chances, pushing for the equalizer, getting the equalizer through Janosai, but there was an offside in the, in, the, in the middle of that, but that actually didn't deflate Real Sociedad, who after the half again pushed, 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 and then Juanmi makes it 2-0, and from that moment all hell broke loose. Uh, so Real Sociedad trying, but in the end William Jose and Rui Bial uh, Rubial make it a very decisive scoreline, uh, one that was, in from what I could tell from the highlights, a whole lot more decisive than the game ever was. So the, um, I saw the, even the, <laughs> the holders, because it was the holders from two three seasons ago, but the final happened last year, uh, last season. Um, so, but one Basque giant is out, but the other one stays in, and Real Madrid, the last of the big teams, is out as well. Athletic Club finally, in their fourth try this season, make it past Real Madrid. Uh, in the league, they have been closed twice. In the Super Cup final, they have been closed. Now, they managed to get over Madrid side. Yes, not a great Madrid side, it has to be said. Uh, if I uh, check the lineups, I think uh, the front line was Vinicius Junior, Sensi, and Rodrigo, so there's definitely a Bonsema missing. However, you still would expect Real Madrid to at least get something against Bilbao. No, Berenguer in the 89th gets the winning goal. Uh, and so Athletic Club have now um, eliminated Barcelona and Real Madrid. So you kind of, and you know, they have been losing seven finals in a row. So you kind of wish that they finally make it over the line. Uh, the draw means that they play against Valencia. I think that's a very in interesting Rayo play against Betis. So... Um, I think it's a super quarter uh, semi-final in many in many ways, and all four teams see like the uh, similar as in the German Cup. This is the chance of a century to finally lift the trophy, and yeah, and then it will be Valencia who have done so recently. But let's see. Uh, going over to La Liga, none of the excitement there. Uh, Getafe making a big comeback, three 0 over Levante, and Levante, yeah seem like they are down um we have to talk about also soon against sevilla it was not a great game by any stretch of the imagination however sevilla could have put some pressure on real madrid they get a penalty coming a little bit out of nowhere you get the chance you maybe can get something from from her game rakitic steps up down and it's not a good penalty and it is uh, easily saved by the goalie um, and again, I, I called uh, Sevilla was the most frustrating team in Europe. And again, it's not that I'm saying that Sevilla is a bad team. They're not. It's frustrating. It's, you th always think that Sevilla could do something. And unless it's the Europa League, they usually don't. They always falter and fall at, uh, at, one, at one hurdle. Uh, and this is the frustrating thing about it. Frustrating also the nil nil drop in Valencia, Real, Sol, Sociedad. Um, I did not see much, but I saw highlights and I had a, how to say, an argument with my brother. I mean, I, uh, over uh, my dislike of Jordi Alba, who is a player I just cannot stand anymore. Uh, I think he's way past his prime. He's overstaying his welcome at Barcelona and he is a very nasty player. I don't like him. He's, of course, defending him. Ah, best blah, 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 whatever. In any, in any case, uh, despite Atletico Madrid taking an early lead through Carrasco, Barcelona actually come back rather strong. Um, the fun thing about this one is that Barcelona, the, Barcelona was definitely entertaining the crowd. Adama Traore, seemingly no one at Atletico Madrid has watched any Premier League footage of his because uh, he's always going on the outside and uh, time and time Adama Traore was passing. Uh, and on the other side is Dani Alves, and I'm thinking, oh, this is a third 38 year old. Atleti is really, really, really bad if you cannot even defend against an, uh, a fighting 38 year old, but it's still not looking uh, smart in any way. But you know, this new look Barcelona, 
made a good performance. They score four goals, which they haven't done in a while. I think the first time under Xavi, I want to say, and maybe the second time this season, because they in the first game of the season, they uh, got uh, they also got four goals against uh, Real Sociedad. Um, despite my dislike for Jordi Alba, he scored a wonderful goal, however, with the shin, so it doesn't count as beautiful as it is. And I think he he can try as he might. I don't think he could ever replicate that, 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 that again. Then Traore assists Gavi, who is the smallest man on the pitch, and heads it in. And then Arusho, uh, after Ferran Torres' assist, uh, gets the third. Uh, right after that, Dani Alves makes it 4-1. And at that point, I basically, you know, I had it on together with the last game on, on, on the phone, but I wasn't on watching Glask. Uh, but it was not a, you know... What can you what, what can you say? Uh, Daniel Alves actually got a hat trick of sorts because he got an assist, he got a goal, and he got sent off, um, which kind of made the game more in interesting at the time when Luis Suarez already pulled one back as well. In the end, I th it got to it be said as entertaining as Barcelona were. If you look at the expected goals, uh, Atletico Madrid had actually higher expected goals than Bar Barcelona because I mean, Jordi Alba's uh, goal was coming from uh, a, a very implausible angle, let's put that that, 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 that way. However, um, it is signs of things to come, and so maybe if you're a Barcelona fan, you might actually look post positively in, into it. Uh, and I could see that maybe they will fin finish now in the Champions League race, which is something for Atletico Madrid, I think of the, of the last eight league games, you lost five really on a downturn, a big down, downturn. And I am at this moment, and I, I really hate to say it, I'm at this moment not sure, if Diego Simeone has the tools to revamp this squad, it is really, it looks bad on and off the pitch. So, uh, and you know, the way he pulled up Daniel Vaz, who is clearly injured, also didn't make all that much sense. Um, a lot of Betis, uh, rightfully so, they are, they are a great team to watch, however, they uh, were a tired from the cup round and beat the Meta Via Real side. They, despite uh, Moreno uh, not be, uh, not being uh, you know, being subbed off in the third or third, fifth actually managed to get a 2-0 win by being absolutely clinical. This was an uh, even game where um, Villarreal and the very Villarreal actually got the, the important uh, you know had the important situations took uh, care of them and in the end ran away probably as deserved winners. They were just a little bit that much sharper. The goal, goals come coming through Pau Tot Torres um, for, uh, with a header and then uh, Capoe with a great shot, more or less out of nowhere, uh, assisted by Trigueros who came on for Gerard Moreno. So being able to win a big game without relying on Gerard Moreno actually show, shows me there's quite some resolve in uh, Villarreal. Real Madrid, easy win. Easy. They didn't have to do much. Asensio scores the goal, and Real Madrid basically uh, it extends the already comfortable lead up top. Uh, it is now uh, six points, and I don't see any way that either one of the Sevilla teams can close that. That one, uh, Real Betis is too far uh, uh, away, and now six points between Real Madrid and Sevilla ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. I'm sorry, sorry to say. Um, if we look at the matches for the next round, we have a Barcelona derby, so that might be interesting. Uh, who is Sevilla playing the play against Elche? Uh, okay. Real Madrid against Villarreal. That is actually probably the most interesting game of the weekend, I gotta say. And if you wanna see uh, whether the Atletico Madrid is really as bad as they are, then watch them against Getafe. I think that could also be an interesting one and for some reason Real Deck against Granada could could have some fireworks in there. Any case, that was it from me. All the stats, tables, blah blah blah, you will get in the stats cast. Uh give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!